Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, hipsters of all ages and races, it is my pleasure to introduce to you the local staple commonly known as My Cousin Big. A native Sacramentoan. Sacramentoan? What I mean is he was born and raised in Sacramento. Specializing in Latin rhythm infused with global bass, electronic cumbia, and house music, he's done everything from throwing house parties to clubs to hosting major venues and events in Los Angeles and Austin, Texas. But of course, if you want to catch a true music mastermind in action, you can find him at your local Golden Bear or Bado and Barlow for your cumbia infused house bass dropping nice. fix. Good. Great. Great. Are you good. 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 Beautiful night. Yeah, it is. Music. It First is. night here, and oh, yeah? uh, I'm impressed. How are you liking it? I'm good. impressed. The music, everything, the atmosphere. Yeah, it's a beautiful oasis. I love. Thank you for having us. Town center of the downtown. Yeah, Sacramento. and thank you for park, thank man. you for sending the ambiance for us. We appreciate it's, it. It's all about ambiance. You know, <laughs> from the candle to the, the the mood setting and everything. Otherwise, it just doesn't feel right. Right. You know? I'm talking to a professional. Yes, you definitely know what I'm you're doing. All about the ambiance. Good. Man. Yeah, it's, I it's, love it. It's you know what? It's a true. It's all about an experience. Because if you don't, you can just go eat anywhere. Right. But you know what? You want an outdoor, beautiful oasis. You got the water in the background. You got the light, you got the candlelight. Look what the candlelight does in the middle of this. Yeah, and the music. <laughs> and, and the, the music. Yeah, the and light. Music. Sacramento, we need good, more man. stuff like this. This so is Sacramento. You. Right. You know, this is a Mex Mexican restaurant with Sacramento culture, I like to say. Thank you so you much. Know, what is Sacramento culture? It's all of this. You know, it's, right. It's, it's me, it's you, it's you, and uh, it's a beautiful culture. So I'm, I'm really into street food. Street food, you know, you're gonna love our carnitas tacos. Okay. You know, it's like you can't they, go wrong with carnitas. You can't. Right? You know, we what what's great about ours, we we, we uh, top them. You know, they come with chicharron, okay. and I recommend that you put them, crackle them on top. Okay. And when you bite into it, you you, you, you feel just, the juices. Uh, yeah, out there. the salsa, the carnitas. The you know, you taste a little bit hint of the orange. You know, the carnitas is just it's amazing, and with the crunch, I'm ready. Just, you know, there's three of them, so. So I got two I'm, beers in me. I think some uh, carnita tacos is gonna go great with that. I love them. And as I would like to call it, the crunch of life. Any carnitas lover would appreciate how they're serving it here at La Cosecha. And as far as my counterpart, well, he ordered the just as tasty and mouth-watering shrimp torta delgado, sautéed shrimp in a creamy, rich chipotle sauce. Hikama Sla, topped on traditional torta bread. Two dishes that will have any Latin cuisine lover on their knees begging for more. Alright, so we're here with the infamous, famous, my cousin Vinny. Hey, you're, you're, I think you're a Honestly, a, a Sacramento staple at this point. I mean, I appreciate that, man. There's, I mean, there's the Golden One Center, and then there's my cousin Vinny. Yeah. So <laughs> you're right up there. You're right up there. You, you made a good name for yourself. So thank, thank you, you for taking the time for, you know, going out of your busy schedule to show us what it is in the day of the life of my cousin Vinny on man. what you do on a day-to-day -day basis. Dude, dude, thanks for having me, man. Yeah. I appreciate you bringing me out. Yeah. Um, feeding me, that's always cool. I like food, food's good, so that's Who what's doesn't up. like food? Yeah. Especially Mexican food at that. I know, man, you picked a good spot. La Cosecha is one of my favorite spots, man, so this okay. is a good place. Well, I'm glad I'm glad that, uh, you know, the, the ambiance is right, you know, people enjoying the night, so. Yeah, yeah. for sure. And, uh, I mean, to be, to be honest, I feel like, you know, it, it would kind of be, Shit. like, over dramatic to say that, we kind of known each other all our lives, but it, I mean, in reality, we kind of do know each other for a good majority of our lives. It's been a while, yeah, it's been a while, man. And, you know, from uh, the very beginning where we met up probably in the playground on St. Patrick's School off of Franklin in the South back area. Back in the day, man, back elementary in, back, school. Back, back in the Elementary day. school days, man. <laughs> but that kind of, you know, that's how we were introduced to each other, but right. also, we ran into each other on the dance floor and, right, and right and music in general like i can tell music well i know personally music played a big role in my life right but obviously music played a big role in your life oh for sure i mean it's a big part of why i'm here today and why i'm even doing what i'm doing i mean it's 
a lot has to do with music, you know? So I think that's where we kind of connected when we grew up from the elementary school days and then break dancing, Bob doing Lockie, the hip hop crew, Boy, all that stuff right? back in the day. So, I mean, it was all revolved around music, I think for the most part. So it's been cool. It's been cool to see everyone's progression and, and how we're doing stuff, so. Okay. Yeah. And not only that, but you also got into, cause I remember for a moment, you were writing and rapping and, you know, lyrically writing your own music. And for a while there, you know, you were you were big on the, the hip hop rap scene. I mean, this is this is high school now. Mm -hmm. So we also, I guess, migrated to high school together as well for a short period of time. It was a phase. I had a phase where I thought I was a rapper. You I know. mean, I'm pretty sure everybody goes through that phase. Right, right. <laughs> I went through that phase. Hey, you got to start somewhere, right? You got to start somewhere. Right. So you definitely started off doing like hip hop rap, producing, doing rap, rapping my own vocals, all that stuff. But so is that because I know back then, you know, that's kind of what exposed you to, I guess, songwriting and Right. Paying attention to lyrics and stuff like that. Well, just the overall art of production, too. Producing music, mixing your own music, you know, the whole creative process of just making a song from start to finish. So, okay. for me, it was just, I just love music. So I was always just trying to, like, make stuff and just create stuff. And then DJing came along, you know, and then I was like, hey, this is cool. Wait, so I can actually go and buy records and play these records? And, like, that started a whole nother, you know, obsession where... You know, most other kids were outside playing sports after school, right. but I was up in my room practicing on my turntables and I was making beats on my computer with a bootleg version of Fruity Loops. You know what I mean? So that's, that's, that was a big part of my adolescent teenage years. You know, a lot of my free time, I was just trying to make music and just be creative and do stuff that I thought was cool. Right. So. And I feel like, especially now, you can see that a lot in what you're doing now because right now it's a lot of experimental sounds experimental rhythms mixed with other rhythms that you wouldn't really find other people trying to mix together thank you man so and, I feel, thank and, you. I, and i've noticed that at a at a very uh, early point you know you, you always were experimental and interested in other shit than what other people were into right so and right I can, and i've seen the evolution of that thank you man yeah yeah and and it's one of those things where you don't realize at the time especially in you know in high school or, or in elementary where we were so fucking young at that point right but who would have thought that you would you know every weekend you'd be out downtown sacramento hosting events people coming out getting buck wild shouting out your name <laughs> and you're just having the time of your life and you get to do it dude I mean, almost, was it every weekend? Every weekend. Yeah, it's, it's every weekend, right? Yeah, yeah. So every Saturday, um, Mike Diamond and myself, we play at Golden Bear, which okay. is over off of 24th and K Street. And so we're in the back bar every Saturday. And so we've been doing that every week for probably the last, a little over two years now. So it's been a good run. It's been really fun. People love it. They're all, everyone's having a good time. And it's just, uh, that place gets wild, man. People like to wild out. Now I see you're at a point where it's a lot of Latin influence, cumbia rhythm, salsa rhythm, but you, you also do a good job on keeping uh, a hip hop feel to it and using bass and hip hop rhythm as well. Thank you. And then you also incorporate EDM and house. And going back to what I said about experimenting with different sounds where you don't necessarily hear a lot of people experimenting like I don't know a lot of DJs that will say oh yeah let's get some Hector Laveau or let's get some cumbia rhythm and right. we'll play it on an EDM drop <laughs> <laughs> so I think you're really like a pioneer of your craft I mean as far as locally goes thank you yeah. thank you man I appreciate that so what's like what does the inspiration come from like what do you do man. to get influenced like when you're making beats when you're sitting in your studio <laughs> what what's the process like you know it's like a it's like a catch-22 of like when you like a lot of stuff when you like a lot of different sounds and you don't just like one genre of music or like one specific style of music as a DJ it's like I'm trying to figure out okay 
how can I share, how can I show everybody else in the world all the things that I like? Because when I listen to these things, they make me feel a certain way. And so how can I convey it to the people around me so maybe they can feel the same way? Because music is very powerful, man, and it's got me through a lot of, uh, it's got me through a lot of dark times, you know, a lot of good times, bad times. It, music was always there. And so there's a lot of emotion behind a lot of music that we cling to, you know, as human beings, stuff that we like. It evokes memories or, you know, certain events that you went to or whatever. So, like, any way I could try to, like, blend all the different styles that I like, and especially with, like, the cumbia side and, like, the mumbaton and all that stuff, it's like, it's a cultural thing, too. You know, it's a kind of a cool way to, like, let people know where I'm from and the, the elements that are part of my life and what make me who I am. And, and that's all a story that's being told. And if I can tell that story through music, that's, to me, that's ideal. That's my ideal way of telling my story. So it's okay. really just a way of, like, expressing. expressing who you are, man. You got to show like, the world who you are. Right. Definitely. I feel like people can relate to music, a, you know, in that same way, um, as far as getting them past tough times or reminding them of good times and uh, just relating on a personal level. Uh, but, you know, when you, when you make your music and your influence, you throw Latin sound, you throw house, you throw EDM, you throw hip hop vibes into it. And this is on a local level, so this is Sacramento, California. Within the past two, three years, we've been doing some stuff to come up locally. So I feel like you're creating a, a, a movement right now, which is pretty solid, and Thank you. you've created a foundation. But when you hear uh, mainstream, and the sound that's coming from mainstream artists and mainstream music, for example, Days, you hear artists like Cardi B, and she has a single with I Like It Like That, and you hear the Latin themes that comes from it, but still keeping a hip-hop vibe, or you hear other artists like Bad Bunny, and right. it's a lot of Latin influence into another culture. Like, what is your take on how the, the bigger scene is going compared to <clears throat> our local yeah. scene? I mean, I think, it's a, I think it's a good thing that that's happening, and I think that with music, there's really, um, there's no rules, man. And so, you know, I don't ever wanna have to feel like I'm me, being put into a box or put into a corner and having to play a certain kind of sound. I mean, does that does that irk you in any type of way? Or you like you're for it or? Dude, I'm just open to creativity, man. Okay. Like, you know, we don't own, we don't own it. We right. don't, you know what I mean? Like, unless you're making the music yourself, but it's like any type of entitlement over like who should be doing what or like who should be collaborating with who, like, I don't care. Right. I want to just see people creating and doing shit, making music, and if it's good, it's good. If it's not, all right, that's cool too. It's just not for me. So there's really else. no, yeah, there's no rules, man. Like it, it's, there's enough rules in the society we live in and we're so conditioned to live life a certain way that for me, music is just the one thing that is freedom for me. Nobody could really tell me what to do or what to play or how to sound or it's that one thing that it's just purely me and I'm in control because there's so much around us that we're not in control of. So whenever you can find that one thing that is like who you are, I just, I honor it and I hold it dearly, man, because what else do you really have other than that? Right. You know? Because Sacramento has always been in between the Bay Area and LA, I feel like it tends to get most often than not overlooked as far as the arts, creativity, just potential in general, what Sacramento has to offer. Right. Do you think that's changing? For sure, definitely. Do you think uh, we would eventually get on that same level as, maybe not LA, that's kind of a whole monster in itself, but. Yeah, I don't know if I would compare it to LA or the Bay, I think. I think we're our own city, man, and I think the people that live here, that are still here, that are doing creative things, we're all, everybody's coming into their own. Everyone's getting older and like maturing and progressing in their field, in their craft, whether it be music, you know, creative agencies, whoever, like the different kind of arts that are media is out there, right? So um, just for me personally, 
having Sacramento as a home base, I'm focusing on the music, the production, the DJing, while still branching out and touring and playing shows in Austin, Miami, you know, touring, going to South by Southwest, really trying to network with other artists outside of here, but still coming back here because this is home. This is right. where I'm from. You know what I mean? So, I mean, essentially, you're creating your identity. You're hustling. You're going to all these different places. You're seeing these different cities. Right. But at the same time, your hometown is creating its own identity. Correct. Exactly. So, that's what's. That's what feels like home for you. Right. Okay. And it allows me to take my inspirations that I get when I travel, go other places, come back, and share it here. And that's a big part of the sounds that I've been playing now. It's a lot. A lot of it has to do with where I've been playing shows at outside of California. Okay. Because I'm being exposed to these new sounds, these different energies, these different vibes, these different events all throughout the U.S., you know, and it's just like, it's crazy, man, because you you just, you see stuff and you're like, you know what, that, I want to do that. I think that might work. I want to do that. I think that might I want to share that because okay. it was that special for me. Maybe somebody else will think it's that special for them out here. Right. You know what I mean? Right. So it's really just about sharing the shit that you're passionate about, man, because that's, that's what keeps the fire burning. Right, right. <laughs> so... As far as um, uh, the whole culture and being a Sacramento native and I guess being proud of what we became to be as of today and what the scene is has turned into as of today, oh, I mean, where, where would you like to see Sacramento in five years, ten years? As yeah. far as the culture and the scene, street-wise. You know, fuck the politics, fuck the capital, and, you know, kings, we got that, we already know that. Right. But as far as the culture and the scene and the people here, you know, where would you like to see us? Hmm, where would I like to see us? I think just um, more diverse types of events to go to. Okay. You know what I mean? I think yeah, we're already definitely. on that road. Yeah. We're already on that pathway, but sure. like... You know, stuff like concerts in the park. Yeah, because you were you, you know, were hosting that too, right? You right, played that. There. Yeah, back in July. Okay. And um, you know, stuff like that. If that stuff like that was happening on a more regular basis, not just one time of the year, right. I feel like that'd be awesome. You know, and not just on that level, but just overall with just different types of events that are showcasing all kinds of music, all kinds of music, and. Not just dance music, but just, you know, and it's already on that way. It's already on that way. And that's why I'm here. Because I feel like each artist, each DJ has to showcase what it is that makes them them, right? Yep. Okay. Well, thank you for um, for having us. Thank you for having me. Thank you for um, taking us through a, a day to day life of what it is that inspires you. And I guess motivates you to wake up on another day and you know keep hustling and keep doing what you're doing and really giving us an insight on what it's like to be a up-and-coming artist a hustling artist who fucking does everything he needs to do to work his ass off and promote <laughs> his name out there thank you man and and just because I, I don't really think a lot of people know the sweat, the tears, the blood, sweat, and tears that artists put into their music for people to enjoy. And I feel like half the time it's either either cheap or almost free right. for people to enjoy. Right. So thank you. For, thank you, man. I appreciate the support, yeah, dude. I, I remember various times throughout the years running into you when I was DJing somewhere, and there was something you would always say to me that I remember. And anytime I would see you, you would always be like, hey, Keep going. Yeah. You would always say that every time I saw you, man, and I really appreciate you for that because I never forgot that, and I always remembered hearing you say that the times that I would run into you, man, and, and that kind of that kind of support it means a lot because we're all going through shit, right? So those simple words can definitely change somebody's attitude and outlook, which can therefore change their direction and where they want to take things in life. I, I mean, I so, still think 
I mean, if you change your mind and you decide to go back to b boy and pop locking, you would have a good career in that. <laughs> I, I feel like you had the Midas touch, man. You had it. <laughs> Thanks, man. Those are good times, though. Those yeah, are good those, times. Those are good memories. Yeah. This is where you're at, and I like that too, man. Right on, man. Thank you for having us. Thank man. you, bro. Appreciate yeah. it. Anytime. Until next time. Yep. Hell yeah. Cheers. Cheers. I don't have my drinks. It's all good.